Our main task this week is going to be using an RSS reader to make websites come to us. One of the challenges in using online resources is that there are so many resources and they get updated pretty often that people just don't have time to check them very often. So a while ago, something called RSS was developed. And any time that you've seen this icon, that indicates that the site supports RSS, really simple syndication. And if you click on that, you're going to see something like this. It's just a text file that isn't very readable and isn't going to make much sense. But what that allows you to do is use a program like Feedly, which is an RSS reader, to subscribe to those sites so that you don't have to go to those sites. They come to you. So for example, I use this for podcasts. So if I want to uh, see what are the latest podcasts for the ones that I have subscribed to, I can click on the category. Or in this category, I have all these different sites that produce podcasts. And I can click on one and see the latest, uh, some, uh, latest entries from that particular site or blog or podcast. Uh, I'll describe more how you can use this in just a bit. But first, let's get set up. First, you're going to need to download this file. Uh, so if you click on this link, you'll be taken to something that looks like this, and click Download. This will download the file, and unless you've set your browser otherwise, it will automatically download into your default folder, which is probably your Downloads folder. If you're not sure where this file is, click on a little arrow here and Show in Folder. and a window will pop up and show you where this file has been saved on your computer. And it's just important to, to know that because you're going to have to find this file in a bit. So the next thing to do is go back to Learning Call and click on this link to Feedly.com. I suggest signing in with your Google account. So you can click Login or you can just go right down here to Quick Start and click Google. You'll get a pop-up window like this. Go ahead and click Accept, and then you'll be logged in. And you won't see much yet. Uh, you might see this. If you do see this, click Import OPML. And if you don't see it, click on these little stripes and click Import OPML. And then you need to find that file that you just saved. Open that and click Import. It'll probably take up to 60 seconds, maybe two minutes, for this to finish importing everything because there is a lot of content in it. When it has finished, you'll see something like this. Uh, and if you go home, you are now subscribed to lots of different feeds with lots of different categories. Now, by default, they are going to list everything alphabetically and they're going to expand everything, which I don't think is very useful. So the first thing I suggest doing is click this little downward pointing arrow next to each category. And what that does is collapse or hide all the feeds that are part of each category. So if you just go down the list and click all of these arrows, everything will be collapsed. And so you can kind of see your categories much more easily. Uh, there are a number of preferences here that you can choose. The only one I'm going to change for now is the default view. I'm going to change to titles only. And the other thing I'm going to do, you notice this left section keeps disappearing. I'm going to pin this for now so that that stays open. Uh, and I can change that back later if I want. Now, you'll notice these are sorted alphabetically. If you'd like to change the order of these categories, you can click Organize. And let's say you want to bring up your class to the top. You can choose whatever class you're in. Click, drag, and drop. And so now that would be listed as the top category. Um, uh, 
And so you can see this adjust the listings of categories here. So if you wanted to see the latest blog post for everyone in your class and you're in TES 531, you can just click and you'll see the latest lists of posts. If you want to expand that, click the arrow and you can click from a particular person and see what they have been posting. Some of the other sections that are automatically in this uh, thing that you just uh, imported. Uh, there's a section for EdTech blogs. So these are related to educational technology, not necessarily language learning. But it's also a good opportunity. You can click on whatever post grabs your attention. And sometimes you'll see a full post. Sometimes you'll see a shortened post. But you'll always see visit website. And so if you click on that, then you'll go to that person's blog and you'll be able to see the entire post. Other categories are ELL, English Language Learning Video Channels. And so actually this one I like to set as magazine because you can see a picture from each video. And these are a lot of, a couple dozen different YouTube channels really of people who produce videos for language learning. So you can scroll down and try to find something that might be interesting. Here are a list of uh, English language teaching blogs and websites. Uh, and so if you click here, you'll see all sorts of uh, posts from people who generally teach English and blog about it. There's also a section for general podcasts. Uh, these are frankly what I listen to a lot, but uh, are generally popular, mostly popular webcasts about a variety of topics. Here's a section for just Korea news. And here's a section for language podcasts. These are all podcasts that have something to do with the English language or learning the English language. And usually when you go on a post, you can see a download link. And if you right click that, save link as, that will let you save the audio or video file. And finally, there is a learning call alumni section. And so these are people who have taken my call courses before and are still blogging. Uh, and I include this because you can see some real life examples of how people are using call tools in their classrooms. And you can see these are all from the last month or so. Uh, and so you can check whatever out and see what people are doing in their classrooms. If you would like to add a site to your Feedly, as long as it has an RSS feed, you can go to that website. And here is an example is all K-pop. They have lots of information about K-pop in English copy the URL, go back to Feedly and click Add Content, and then just paste the URL. And if it has an RSS feed, it will find it. If it doesn't, it won't, and it will give you this message and you can't add it to Feedly. So instead, we will go to another site called Kpop Stars, and I'm going to copy that address. And notice here, I see that RSS icon. So I'm pretty confident that we can add this. I'm going to paste that here. Oops. So again, I'm going to click Add Content and paste it. And this pops up. So this means that I can follow it. So first, it's going to show me that feed and uh, a list of the articles that have appeared recently. So if I want to add this, I'm going to click the plus Feedly, Add It. And I can add it to an existing category, or I can create a new category which I'm going to go ahead and do and create a category for K-pop uh, and go down and add. And so now I have a category for K-pop here with one feed in it. And so if I find other K-pop sites, I would add that there. Just to point out a couple of other features, uh, when you click on a story, uh, you'll have all of these icons here. This lets you save it for later if you don't have time to read the article, but you want to be sure to, to check it out later. If you click on that, then it gets saved here under Save for Later. Um, here you can mark items as red if you click the check mark. Uh, you can refresh feeds here, although they will generally update automatically. And then wherever you are, you'll have some options here, whether you only want to see the unread posts, things like that. So that is Feedly. Uh, 
do your best to get it installed and import uh, the OPML, which will give you all of these categories and sites, and then look around. Uh, you can do some basic search here if there's something in particular you're looking for in the existing feeds. Uh, it can also help you search for new feeds if you want to search a certain category. So browse, uh, see if you can find something interesting, and uh, good luck using Feedly.